So in this slide, I wanted to say, OK, how bad is it? If we want to georeference the whole world, and we have this information about how long it took for Manus. So this is an often quoted but completely unknown number of how many specimen records there must be in the world. It's an estimate that somebody came up with and published and didn't say how they figured it out. And it's the number that everybody uses. Let's use it again because it's the only number we have. Suppose there are 2.5 times 10 to the 9th specimen records to be georeferenced in the world. And suppose there are sick records per locality based on the Manus project and that we can do more or less 14 localities per hour. How big is that job? I won't be around to help them all repatriate. That's way too long. Unless, of course, they put 15,500 people to do the work. Just by comparison, Three years later, Ornus began georeferencing using the same methods, the point radius method, but now we have a few more tools. In Ornus, we had BioGeomancer. BioGeomancer is an automated, semi automated georeferencing tool online that can interpret those locations with the headings and offsets the way Geolocate can now, and to give you the georeferences, all as whole projects of data. And by using that, we were able to more than double the rate of georeferencing, up to 30 localities per hour. And again, this was about 1.4 million specimens and a few less localities. So there are more birds per location than there are mammals on average, apparently. And for, there were 30 georeferencers who georeferenced for two years to accomplish the georeferencing that you see on this map. The, day, the money that was provided to the Ornus project to georeferencing was only sufficient to cover the United States and Canada. But the process was the same. We had georeferencing centers. There were seven georeferencing centers, and all the data for all the 32 collections in Ornus were sent to those data centers to georeference. And they sent them back to me, and I quality checked them, and I sent them back again to the original 32 institutions. So we've increased <coughs> our rates and we reduced the amount of time to georeference everything in the world, but not to some sufficient level. So what we really want is to be able to do automation. And the state of the art these days is to use the combination of all the best available resources. This resource called GATAM, maybe some of you have seen it. These are GIS layers for the administrative boundaries of the world. And it's a collection by country or the whole world all at once of the best available data layers that were free. So this is an extremely useful data source. You can go to the GATAM website and download the GIS layers for your country. Geolocate, we've shown. This is where we start to get into automation. It didn't show you the desktop software. It didn't show you the online software. I only show you the web services. But all those options are available, including a collaboration platform for Geolocate. Google Maps and Google Earth have changed the game entirely. There are plenty of good resources within these data sets and this mapping capability to help us to georeference, to find places that aren't, for example, in the geolocate database. And then with a combination of Google Maps and Google Earth and the calculator, we can take care of all the remainder that geolocate can't georeference. So this is the suite of tools that we have at our disposal now. This is just a diagram to show you can see basically in areas that are whiter is where the most detailed administrative boundary information is. And that varies across the world. Because different countries have different divisions. Some have up to five 
different administrative levels. Some have only one. You know everything there is to know about Google Maps and Google Earth, I'm sure. Geolocate. <coughs> this is important because I would like you to have the website for it. This will be, this presentation will also be into day eight as well as the georeferencing folder. So it's in there twice, each in its context. And then I've shown you an uh, introduction to the georeferencing calculator. So the big problem, <coughs> and where do you go after a big collaboration like that, is as I said, the data need to go back into the original databases. And the problem with it, the biggest problem with that, is that the institutions don't know how to do it. And they're either afraid to ask, or they don't know that they can ask, or they're embarrassed to ask for some reason. Most of them would like to have those data connected to their databases because it helps them to do their research. But they're probably doing it outside of their databases and only for their research right now. So in VertNet, we'd like to change that and we'd like to give them the support they need to get it back in their databases. So now, whenever we speak with an institution about getting the data into VertNet, we make that offer and say, we know you have georeferences, we know they weren't available in Manus or HerpNet or Ornus. Let's help you make them, put them in your database where they belong at the source. So that's what I had to say about that topic. Does that cover what you had hoped, Town? The obstacles <laughs> and how to solve the obstacle? Okay. Any questions about collaborations or repatriation or automation? Okay. <clears throat>